All right, here we have an example of a whole bunch of limits and a crazy looking graph to go with it. So we have four different limit questions here based on this, this graph f of x. And we're going to get down through this and then we're going to tackle this green question here. And that's really where probably the new material starts. But uh, again, we're thinking left and right bound, you know, or left and right handed uh, limits on this too. It has to come from both sides to, to exist. So the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1. Okay, let me get on a different layer so I can write all over this thing as I need to in like bright red. All right, so at negative 1, which is right here, as x approaches negative 1 from the left direction, so as it approaches this way, it's going to come down this graph and approach negative 1. So if this question... Or I'm sorry, it would approach negative 3. It would approach negative 3 here. As, you know, if this question looked like this, negative 1 from the negative direction, the answer would be negative 3. But that is not what it is asking. That's half of what it's asking, though, isn't it? It's saying, well, what is it, what is the limit as x approaches 1? Well, as it approaches 1 from this direction, uh, it's going to come down here and meet at a different spot. So as it approaches from the from the right, uh, from the positive direction, it's going to have a limit of 1, of 1 right there. And from the negative direction, it's going to have a limit of negative 3, and we can't have that. We can't have that. Now I'm going to delete all these little writings that I'm doing to keep my graph clean here. But this would, this does not exist which is a perfectly good answer. It does not exist. Let's look at it at x equals positive 1. Okay, <clears throat> remember the definition of a limit. It's got to come from both directions. So as we approach it from the left, what happens? Well, we go up this graph, <coughs> excuse me, and it gets closer and closer to this point of 3 right here. So it gets closer and closer to 3. What happens when I approach it from the left side? Well, it goes closer and closer to the same spot. Now, I know it's it's um, got a point down here where this has a hole in it, but it still satisfies the limit definition. It approaches this value of 3 from both directions, so that does make it a viable limit. Okay, so this would, this as I approach... For, uh, ne one, positive one, it would have a limit of three, three, positive three. The f of x value would be right there. That does have a limit. Okay, at positive three, positive three, you can see that it's going to have the same effect as this one did. So as I approach from the left, you can see that it's going to come up here and approach what looks like four, and as I approach from the right, right-handed limit here, this direction, it's going to have an f of x or y value of two. So those are two different things. They do not equal each other. So we can see that this value, this limit, does not exist. All right. But probably the easiest one on the page, but sometimes often missed, is at 7. So at this point, what is the value of the limit as x approaches 7 from both directions? <clears throat> so as we approach it from the left-hand side, it would go up this graph and approach this point right here. Okay, right here. This would match up like this and go over to here. And that would be 2. Okay, this is the value 2 here. Uh, as I approach from the right, the same thing happens. We get closer and closer and closer to 2. In fact, if I literally plugged in 7 into this function, it would give me a value of 2 because that is a solid dot here. And there's no other um, discontinuous behavior going on. There isn't a hole up here in this thing. You know, there isn't something like that in this graph. Okay, so let me get all this, all these billions of dots off here as I hit the undo button. It, 
appears that I've hit it as much as I can, whatever, uh, this would have a limit of positive 2. All right. So I'm going to pause the video and discuss this. For okay, so let's let's look at this green question here. It says, at which values, at which values above are the graphs continuous? At which values are they continuous? So we'll, we got four different ones to look at. First, negative one. Okay, is it continuous there? The answer is no. This has a fancy name called a jump. A jump discontinuity that's called a jump discontinuity in fact it it stops here and then jumps up there it, it's called a jump discontinuity uh, there are other types of discontinuity here and that is right here at at one so if we're asking ourselves at one is this thing continuous or not well, it has a limit, but it's not continuous. This is called a removable. I'm going to make a little line up here. This is called a removable. Removable discontinuity. Believe I spelled that right. Don't hate me if I didn't. Okay, so that's called a removable discontinuity. I think the point is just removed out and stuck down there. Whereas this, the graph completely splits. These are both examples of uh, discontinuity. Although, you can still be have discontinuity and still have a limit. And we saw that example right here. That's why that's so important to talk about. That's why that one's so important to talk about. So we still have a limit here. Limit exists on that but it doesn't here here the limit does not exist all right limit does not exist um over here though and this is the same thing this this i'm going to delete this but it's what i'm circling here in bright purple that that is a jump discontinuity as well just like just like it uh at negative one but what about this what about this right here <clears throat> that thing is just flat out continuous okay this is continuous and so that would be the only one that is continuous now there is a very fancy definition for what makes something continuous that will officially go over tomorrow but this thing is continuous because Okay, now I'm going to circle these two points here. I'll get into this just for a second. But this one here is continuous because if I evaluate this function, in other words, if I plug in 7 into f of x, it would equal this point right here. It would equal, looks like 2. And we saw that here. The limit not only approaches, as it approaches 7, equals 2, but in fact, f of 7 equals 2. But over here, you can see that this isn't true. This isn't true. My limit on this one comes up here, approaches this hole right here. It approaches that. I've got so much stuff drawn on this now, that's why I'm going to do it again tomorrow. But if I evaluate this function, f of 1 doesn't equal its limit. It doesn't equal 3. It doesn't equal this. It equals this point. That's why it's a solid dot there. So f of 1 equals positive 1. And we can see that its limit, as it approaches 1, equals 3. That is that removable discontinuity right there. All right, I hope you've taken a lot out of this video. I would recommend watching it again at some point. See ya.